scriptures in the Bible whereby God himself cursed people. Are those things still possible in this age and time? And how can one break away from any form of curse? All these and more we'll be answering on today's episode of Catholic Faith Forum. I'm your host, Stephanie Ezunye, and today we'll be talking on curses and how to break them. Joining me today is a very special guest. So don't go anywhere, because right after this break, we'll be meeting him. Stay tuned. Welcome back, Saints. This is Catholic Faith Forum. I am your host, Stephanie Ezunye. So today we'll be talking on the topic, curses and how to break them. Joining me today to take this, this topic is Father Evaristus Abu. Welcome, Father. Thank you. It's really it's good to have you today. Thank you. Yeah. Thank, Thank you so much for joining us. You're yeah, welcome. All right. So, Father Evaristus is a priest of Benin Archdiocese and currently a student of psychology at the University of Lagos. He was ordained in 2012, and since then, he has worked in various parishes and archdiocesan institutions. He shares his daily reflections on social media, and his motto is, be happy, live positive, it is well with you. And this happens to be the name of his media outfits. It's good to have you once again, Father. Thank you. All right, so let's get right into it. So we're talking about curses and how to break them. So how would you define a curse? Let's start from there. The opposite of a blessing. Are you serious? So when you are blessed, that means somebody has spoken something, something to, good. good to, to you, you by the power of God. Okay. And it will come to pass. It will come to pass. Meanwhile, curse, on the other hand, is if somebody has spoken something evil to you, to you. And most of the time, it's not by the power of God. Okay. Because God would not want to curse you as, okay. a, as his own child. Yeah. You know, as children of God, we cannot be under the curse of God. Oh, God. Jesus Christ, as St. Paul tells us in Galatians chapter 3, if you read verse 10 to 13, yeah. that Jesus Christ became a curse for us so that to take away the curse of the law from us. From us. So as Christians, as children of God, as baptized uh, Catholics, we cannot be under a curse from, from God. God. However, there are people who practice magic. There are people who practice, who are, who are all cult, who belong to various societies, mm -hmm. and they actually worship the devil. Okay. They can attempt to curse a Christian, but as a child of God, that curse will not mm -hmm. come to pass in your life. Wow. And anyone who thinks he or she is under a curse, there are certain prayers that you see, and you can actually consult a priest. You can be exorcised. Uh, we can pray for you. We can deliver you okay. from if you feel that you are under any form of, of curse. a curse. All right. So now I would like to ask, what is the difference between a curse, a spell, and swear? Okay. Yeah, so what's the difference between them? You know, I've come across movies, especially all these horror movies, whereby they're putting a spell on you. So, so what's the difference between a curse, a spell, and also swear? You know, you can just, especially in Lagos, just be walking around, someone just go, hey, Lodi Buruku, or one, one thing like that. So mm. what's the difference generally, or is there any similarity between these three, curses, spell, and swears? To swear is to take an oath. Okay. That is my understanding of to swear. swear. To take an oath by you, you place your hand on the Bible and say, I will do this. I promise to do this. Uh, for instance, a husband and wife getting married. Yeah. Uh, they, so they, they, they promise to be faithful to each other to death do them path. But to swear, we swear in the, in the law courts. For instance, you just become a governor. <laughs> <laughs> spray that you're the governor of uh, uh, Lagos State of tomorrow course. and then you place your hand on the Bible and then you swear that you will be a good leader you'll be a good leader you'll be a good governor yeah. and so on but all causes are spells but not all spells are causes so they can't be used interchangeably no they can't all causes to, to cause is to say a word it's usually a, a cause a, a spell is a sentence Mm -hmm. It's something yeah. that people say. 
So when you are cursed, somebody has said something. Somebody has said it's, it's a sentence. Yes. Just as a spell is also a sentence. sentence. But some spells are good. Some well, spells okay. are positive. Why? Because when, 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 when we say spell, now it cannot come from a Christian. Okay. A spell cannot come from a Christian. One who believes in, in, in Christ, Christ one, one, one who believes in God, yes. will, not, will not use that spell. Uh -huh, because w during my uh, research, uh, trying to study about the meaning of curses and spells yeah. and all that, I come to discover that these are uh, things, uh, the, the word spell is, is actually a vocabulary for those who practice magic. Okay. Not even for those who believe in God. It's not for those who believe. So among them, they just believe that there, there are spells and there are curses. So a curse is a type of spell that is okay. evil that is negative, that yeah. will bring something bad to someone. Meanwhile, there are other spells right. that are not negative, that could bring something good. That is what they believe. Yeah. But me, as a child of God, I don't believe anybody can curse me. Okay, I, don't know, I don't believe that any Christian can be under a curse. Once you are baptized, you have been freed from that uh, you know, some people use this word, this term, ancestral curse, mm. that, oh, what is going on with me now is because of my people, my father's father's father's, uh, and so on and so on. Yeah. Jesus Christ was asked a question. Someone was born blind, and they asked Jesus a question. Why, how come this man was born blind? Is it because of his sins or because of the sin of his parents? You know, the thinking for many is that, for anybody to be suffering anything in life, yeah. for instance, blindness, then somebody must have sinned. Either the person himself sinned, or, or maybe parents. his parents sinned. So they believed in ancestral causes. The Jews yeah. believed in ancestral causes. And Jesus Christ said, no, this man did not. It's not because of this man's sin. Mm. It's not because of the sin that he was, he was going to commit, that, that he was born blind. Yeah. It's not because of his parents. Rather, this blindness is for the glory of God, God, that the works of God may be manif manifested in his life. So there is nothing like ancestral cause. There's nothing like that. It, calamity come to us, uh, as in bad things happen to good people. The story of Job in the oh, Bible yeah. is an example of that. Bad things can happen, happen to, to good, good people, people, but they are not under causes. Right. So anybody who says, I am under a curse, uh, what is going on with me is because I have been cursed. cursed. Well, probably not a Christian. <laughs> it's not a Christian. Those who say village people, they're not Christians. Yeah, of course, <laughs> a lot of people go to church, but I not understand. everybody is a Christian. All to right. be a Christian is to believe in Jesus Christ. And to believe in Jesus Christ has a lot of implications. When you say, I believe in Jesus Christ, yeah. I believe in God, it has a lot of implications. It's not just a matter of reciting I the mean. creed. One has to also believe that I am a child of God. Yeah. And anyone who believes that I am a child of God knows that he or she cannot be under, under a curse. curse. So whatever you are going through, things are happening that you don't just understand. Business is not moving. Relationships are not working out. You're not making progress in life. These are challenges we of go life. Through in life. And you believe, because you're a Christian, you believe that whatever I'm going through now, I will come out of it. This is not a cause. I cannot be under a cause because I believe in God and I know that God is my father. Yeah. And it will bring me out of this. Yeah. All right, guys. I hope you've learned so much. Like in this short period, we've spoken so much. All right, guys. Let's find out who the saint of this week is. Stay tuned. Saint of this week is Saint Pancras. Pancras was born at about the year 290 in Phrygia, a region of Asia. He was the only son of Cleonus, a wealthy Roman nobleman and his wife. She was also of noble birth, but her name is lost to history. Pancras spent the first 10 years of his life in and around Phrygia. When he was nine years old, his mother died. Cleonus, her husband, laid her body to rest 
beside the gently flowing water of a brook which ran through the grounds of the family estate. Because he was said to have been martyred at the age of 14 during the persecution under Glaucician. His father, Cleonus, died when he was only eight years old. Pancras was entrusted to his uncle, Dionysius K. They both moved to Rome to live in a villa on the Caelan Hill. They converted to Christianity and Pancras became a zealous adherent of the religion. During the persecution of Christians by Emperor Diocletian, around 303 AD, he was brought before the authorities and asked to perform a sacrifice to the Roman gods. Diocletian, impressed with the boy's determination to resist, promised him wealth and power. But Pancras refused, and finally the emperor ordered him to be beheaded on the Via Aurelia on 12th May 303 AD. A Roman matron named Ottavilla recovered Pancras' body, covered it with balsam, wrapped it in precious linens, and buried it in a newly built sepulchre dug in the catacombs of Rome. Pancras' head was placed in the reliquary that still exists today in the Basilica of St. Pancras. Pancras is popularly venerated as a patron saint of children, jobs, and health. His name is also invoked against cramps, false witnesses, headaches, and perjury. His image in statue form can be found in many bars, restaurants, and other businesses. The feast day of St. Pancras is 12th May. St. Pancras, pray for us. Welcome back, guys. This is Catholic Faith Forum. And joining me today is a very special guest who is still talking on curses and how to break them. So, Father, I would like to ask, how does one know if he or she is under a curse? I know you said that Christians, as a Christian, if you know you believe in Christ, you can't be under a curse. So now people actually believe that they're under a curse. So how does one know? But I believe, okay, you're not a Christian now. Let's say you're not a Christian. So meaning you can actually go under a curse. So how does one know if he or she is under a curse? If you have not been baptized, if you have not given your life to Jesus Christ. So generally everybody that hasn't been if baptized If you is... are simply a nominal Christian, you go to church, but the church doesn't go into you as in... Well, you're, that is, you're not a proper, a true Christian. You're not Christian. a Christian. That's how you know that you're under a curse. Wow. Yes, I've never seen it like that. Christian, then really you're not a curse because without Jesus Christ, you are nothing. Without God, you are nothing. You cannot survive in this world without the protection of your Father. That's why people ask, "Who is your Father?" When people ask, "Who is your Father?" What do they mean by that? Like, who is who is protecting you? Who yeah. is in charge of your life? Where did you come from? As a Christian, God is my Father. You have God. But if you're not a Christian, that means you're on your yeah. own. So generally, this thing of village people following me, village people are following me, even Christians, I'm sure you know, they say, ah, it's as if something, my mother in the village. Meaning mm -hmm. all these things, will I say it's actually ignorance that makes people say something like Simple. this? Simple, ignorance. 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 And the fact that they are not really close to Jesus Christ. Yeah. They don't know Jesus. So a lot of people do things that they should not do. They live in sin because they don't know Jesus. They just feel that Jesus is there to answer their prayers, to bless them, to provide this for them, to provide that for them. Yeah. But if you look at their lifestyle, the existence of sin and evil in their life, it shows that they don't really believe in Jesus Christ. They don't really know Jesus. So for someone to say, my village people are against me, yeah. my problem is because of my village people, the person does not know Jesus. Wow. Wow. That was really, really interesting, honestly. So how can one break away from any kind of curse now as a non-Christian and I believe I'm under a curse or under a spell? Mm -hmm. How do I break away from it? The first thing first. Get, get Jesus. Baptized. I wanted to say that. Get baptized. Become a Christian. A Become proper a Christian. Christian. And if you feel that you are being attacked by demons, yeah. because it is possible for demons to attack Christians. That is not, they are not under a curse. They are being attacked. They are being attacked. 
So Christians can experience demonic attacks. All right. There are a lot of prayers, Catholic prayers, that one can say. For instance, mm -hmm. St. Michael the Archangel prayer. Okay. Prayer to St. Michael the, the Archangel. St. Yes. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the, the battle. battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and as the of the, the devil. devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray, and do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Hosts, cast by him. the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all other evil spirits who prowl about the world looking for the ruin of souls. Mm. The, this is just one out of the many Catholic prayers that one can say. But I will also suggest that such a person should meet the spiritual director, yeah. you should meet a priest, or you should meet the diocesan exorcist. Every diocese has an exorcist. That is a priest designated by the bishop whose job it is to cast out demons from persons who are possessed or persons who feel that they are under attacks of the evil ones. Yeah. The person can be free. All the right. person can be made free, even as, as Catholics. Anyone can experience demonic attack. All you need to do is to pray. pray with prayer, mindset. with prayer, you are free. You cannot be under bondage when you when are a person prayer. of prayer. Honestly, this is so this is so interesting. Like I've really learned a lot, I have to say. Thank you so You're much welcome. for this, Father. Thank you so much. All right, guys, let's meet the Know Your Faith crew and find out what they have in store for us. Stay tuned. Hello guys, you welcome back to another episode of Know Your Faith series. I am Elefati, and today we'll be answering the question, are there sins that can't be forgiven by a priest? In the Catholic Church, certain sins are not just sins, but are also considered canonical sins, and as such, receive canonical penalties that need to be lifted. Such sins are called reserved sins. According to the 1917 Code of Canon Law, Reserved sins are those sins whose absolution is not within the power of every priest to absolve, but is reserved to either the bishop or pope or their due delegates. This means that reserved sins cannot be absolved by a priest unless he is permitted by his bishop or pope, or in special cases like at the point of death. So, what are some examples of sins that cannot be forgiven by a priest? I know the first thing that comes to mind when you hear this is abortion. You were right. Until 28 November 2016, when Pope Francis indefinitely extended the power of Catholic priests to absolve the sin of abortion. Aside abortion, other reserved sins include one, apostasy, which is when a person renounces his or her faith or belief in the church. Two, desecration of consecrated places like a church or a chapel. Three, physical attack on a priest, bishop, or pope. Four, a priest who absolves an accomplice in sexual sin. Five, revealing the overhead confession of another. Six, pretended celebration of the Eucharist by one who is not a priest. Seven, attempt to hear confession by one who cannot validly do so. And eight, profaning a consecrated host. Did I leave out any? Let us know in the comment section. Till I come your way next time, be bold, be Catholic. Bye. Thank you so much, Know Your Faith crew, for that amazing topic. I really learned a lot. Thank you so much, Father, so far. But there's a question I really want to ask. It's from the Bible. So it goes like this. So the Bible says in the book of Numbers, chapter 14, verse 8, The Lord is slow to anger and abounding in love and forgiving sin and rebellion. Yet he does not leave the guilty unpunished. He punishes the children for the sin of the parents to the third and the fourth generation. So now bring it back. So does this mean that God still allows generational curse to exist? And up to now, does God still curse people even to their third and fourth generation. You quoted a passage from the, the book, book of, of Numbers. Numbers. How I wish you can just go on, continue throughout the Old Testament on curses. Get to Ezekiel chapter 18. Okay. 
the same God who was quoted in Numbers as mm. saying the punishing the from to fourth, the third yes. generation, the same God said, never would this be quoted again. In other words, there was, it, was, it was before, but wow. God said in Ezekiel 18, of course, Ezekiel came after Numbers. Yeah. He said, never will it be quoted again, this parable, that the parents ate sour grapes and the children's, need, the children's teeth are pain in them. Meaning that anybody who sin will suffer for his own that sin. Own so sin. If the child sin, the child will suffer for his own, own sin. No. And if the parent is a good person, the, the, good, the blessing will come and on the parents. The parents. So if your parent is good and the child is uh, bad, God will not say, ah, because your father is good. Your father is a good man. So therefore, you are a bad child. I will forgive you. I will, yeah. no, nothing will happen to you. But everybody suffers consequences for their Actions. own sins. So it was like that. Let's say it was like that in the book of Numbers. But it's no longer like that. No. God continues to reveal himself. Up to now, we don't know everything about God. So we cannot just pick out verses from the Bible and use them to make conclusions about God. God continues to reveal himself. The yeah. book of Hebrews will say, at various times in the past, God spoke to us through prophets. But now, in these last days, God has spoken to us through his son, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. So those in the Old Testament did not really know God. Let me put it that way. Okay. They knew God only through the prophets. But now we know God through Jesus Christ. Yeah. And I don't think there was any way that Jesus Christ said that there will be generational causes. Uh, not too long ago, I, I told you about a, a man who was born blind. Yeah. And the disciples asked Jesus Christ, why is this man blind? Is it because he sinned? In other words, is it, is it his fault? Like, is he being punished? His blindness, is he being punished for what he has done? But this man was born blind, meaning that, is it, is it that he was being punished even before he, he had the yeah. opportunity to commit sin? And Jesus Christ said, no. Is it, is it, was he born blind because his parents sinned? Yeah. So is it that his blindness was punishment for the parents' sin? And Jesus Christ said, no. So yeah. there's nothing like generational curses. All right. So guys, you've learned it. There is nothing like generational curses. Mm -hmm. you, suffer what, you suffer what you go through, if I may put it that way. Whatever you go through, you suffer for your actions. Yes, yeah, there is a consequence, consequence, there is for, a consequence every for every sin and that every action. you commit. So it's that not the case that God is punishing you. Some people say God is punishing me because of my sin. The sin itself, the very act itself, carries its own punishment. That is what, that is what people need to understand, that yeah. sin, sin is defined as an offense against God. Yes. But the truth of the matter is that sin is an offense against me. So if I know something is bad, uh, I know that uh, this is fire. This cup now is, fi yeah. is fire is burning. I know it is bad. And fire has burnt me before. Yeah. And I'm looking at the cup and I decide Let's to place my on hands on it. I'm offending myself because the fire will burn me. Not God. Not God. Not God. Not, not God. God. So, so God, God is not one punishing judge. Like God is not a policeman who, who says, you, you, you did this one yesterday. Two strokes, take this two. one. You take this one. No, 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 no. It is what we do. Okay. It is, we, we suffer the consequences of our actions. It's not mm -hmm. like generational cause. The fact that no one has made it in your family does not mean that your you, family is cause. Yeah. You see people who break out of this, you know, because they, they become the first in the family. So you, you, you can become the first. You can come out of it because you, you are a child of God. Forget about what your family yeah. has suffered. Yeah. You can be the one to change your family history, yeah. to change your family name. Thank you so much for that, Father. So okay. one more question I would like to ask before we round up is, what do you have to say with people that suffer from something I'll call spiritual husband and spiritual wives? That is when they sleep in their dreams, they see themselves like having sexual intercourse with a man they don't even know. So most people call it um, spiritual husband, spiritual wives. What do you have to say about that? I have had many Catholics who come to tell me uh, Father, 
I went to visit um, a prayer man, a prayer warrior. Yeah. I met this man and he told me, uh, my problem is that I have a spiritual wife, I have a spiritual husband. And I tell them, what makes you think or what makes you believe that what this person has said is true? There is nothing like spiritual wife or spiritual husband in Catholic theology. Okay. There's nothing like that. More still, if you are sleeping, yeah. you're no longer in charge of your body. Your body. Whatever you are dreaming, is not, you, are, you, you are not the cause of your dreams. Like, I, you don't sit down to write a script. This of night, I'm going to dream what? this. And you cannot now use the content of your dream to now judge yourself and say, because I dreamt that uh, I was having sex in a dream, it means that this one's I have a spiritual wife or I have a spiritual husband. Personally, I don't believe in anything like that. Yeah. I don't believe in spiritual wife. I don't believe in spiritual husband. I know that wet dreams do exist. I know that. And I also know that somehow the content of your dream may be uh, as a result of what you are, your mind is preoccupied with. So if someone's always regularly having those sexual dreams regularly, it's, well, I say something that their mind is preoccupied with. It's nothing spiritual. Now, so I, 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 I was going to land. I know that you're not in charge of the content of your dream, but I also know that what you dream may be as a result of what you have been thinking about. Yeah. So if you are having that dream and you have question to believe that perhaps this is a spiritual attack, the way forward or the way out of it yeah. is prayer. Go to God in prayer. Go to God in prayer. There's nothing that prayers cannot, cannot do. do. There's nothing that is so beyond under, the power of God. the power of prayer, honestly. It's as if we really underrate the power of prayer. Yeah, we tend to underrate the power of prayer. And I would say, as a Catholic, be mindful of those you tell your problems to. Be mindful of those you consult. Because there are so many uh, Christian theologies out there that are not sound. They cannot stand the test of time. Like this question of spiritual wife or spiritual husband, I don't think it is, it is a Catholic theology. I don't think, and this is mm. Catholic faith forum. So we're talking about the Catholic, Catholic church here. I don't think there's any priest that you will tell, this is what I'm going through. And they will say, oh, you have a spiritual wife, you have a spiritual husband. I don't think so. Yeah. But if you have cause to believe, because when it comes to what people believe, you cannot force someone to believe something and not to believe another thing. If you have cause to believe that you have a spiritual wife, then there is a way out of it. And that is to go to God in prayer. prayer. That is to go for deliverance, to go for exorcism, to have uh, uh, you visit the Blessed Sacrament, kneel down before Jesus, call on Jesus continuously, fast and pray about it. Jesus Christ casted out many who were possessed by demons. Even today, people are being possessed by demons. So perhaps maybe what you are referring to as a spiritual wife could be the case that you are, you are possessed. You have been possessed already yeah. by a, a demon and it is acting through you or it wants to take possession of your body. It wants to walk in you or through you. If that is what you are experiencing, then prayer is the answer. Prayer Deliverance is the, is the answer. Exorcism is the answer. You can always get out of it. It's, it's not a permanent thing. Yeah, I understand. Thank you so much, Father, for this, for this session. It's, it was so amazing, like so interesting. I myself, I learned a lot. You're Honestly, welcome. thank you so much, Father. So that's it, guys. I hope you learned so, so much. I learned a lot. So we've seen that as a Christian, these things that, talk, they, that they say about generational curses, it does not apply to you. Even if you feel that you, you might be under a curse, you can always go to God in prayer and always know that God, since you're his child, 
he will always answer you. So that's it, guys. We've come to the end of today's show. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you loved it, because I loved it. I loved it. So if you have any questions, comments, or even contrary opinions to what was said, feel free to drop them in the comment section. Subscribe to us if you've not yet subscribed. And do not forget to follow us on our social media platforms at CFF on TV. Until next time, guys, keep being saints in jeans and shirts. Goodbye.